Hi, this is Dr. Paul Steinke with Foot and Ankle Associates of North Texas in Keller in Grapevine, Texas. And today we'll be discussing the minimal incision lapoplasty procedure. Now this is a variation of the original lapoplasty procedure that allows for a smaller incision. Now this smaller incision is about half the size of a normal one at our main operative site. The advantage of that is obviously less trauma to the tissues and a smaller scar. So in the case of this patient, she has a rather large bunion and a bunion is the widening of the angle between the first and the second metatarsal. So you see this deviation, this bump, which causes irritation to chew gear, and then the deviation of the toe into the second, which causes rubbing, or in later term stages of bunion can cause this. So we'll be reducing that angle, and we'll be doing that with through several incisions. And again, a minimal incision, so a smaller incision, a little different than minimal or mini incision surgery, which uses small incisions and does not correct the bunion from the source. The advantage of lapoplasty is it corrects it from the source, reducing the risk of recurrence from up to 70% down to one to 3%. So we've created about a three and a half centimeter incision here. We've exposed what we call the first tarsometatarsal joint or TMT joint. The next step in this procedure is one of the most important parts of lapoplasty versus traditional bunion surgery and the fact that we use a special saw blade to what we call plane the joint, basically making that joint a flatter surface so we can rotate the first metatarsal. Um, in the most cases of bunions, there is a rotational component to that, about 87% of the time, and that goes unreduced in minimal incision surgery and also more traditional bunion corrections. So we'll be planing that joint to allow that rotation to occur so we can return this patient to normal anatomic alignment. Just like in your hand, there's a muscle that opposes the big toe to the rest of the foot. So there's a muscle that allows your big, your thumb, excuse me, to move inwards. So when you get a bunion deformity, there's this angle that occurs between these two long bones. That muscle will pull the big toe over. So in order to bring that big toe into a straight position again, we're going to have to release the contracture in those tissues. So we're making a small incision here to allow release of that joint capsule there to bring that toe straight. So when I do reduce that angle, the toe remains in a rectus or straight position. All right, so we can see here we have these two round bones. They're very small and difficult to discern. They're called sesamoid bones. They're supposed to be sitting like little snake eyes underneath that long first metatarsal bone. But in this case, you've seen they've deviated. Now that deviation is a combination of a little bit of arthritis in that joint, but also because that bone is not straight. It's actually rotated to the side. So what we're using this small guide pin for is to derotate that first metatarsal to bring it straight and bring those back into anatomic alignment, those little sesamoid bones. So I'll try to show you here on the live flora scan is the reduction of those bones. So we're gonna push that angle together. We're gonna to rotate that bone ever so slightly. And you can see those bones kind of slowly tip back into position. Now it's a little difficult to show this live. We're doing our best here. We're gonna rotate that and they'll slide back underneath that, that joint. So we place this little device here. It's called a speed seeker. What it does is it creates a little, uh, basically a fulcrum to help reduce that angle. And classically with this procedure, we'd use a more open technique where the incision would come down to here and put this little reduction device that reduces the angle between the first and the second metatarsals directly against the bone. Now obviously that results in a bigger incision, so what Treese has come up with, the company that makes this product, is what we call the minimal incision uh, reduction clamp, which has this clamp that goes on the outside of the skin. Again, that reduces the in incision length, reduces the, how much uh, dissection is going on, so patients should hopefully have less swelling, less pain, smaller scar. So you can see we've applied our reduction clamp between the first and the second metatarsals by making a small stab incision. Now this outer clamp goes outside the skin, not requiring the need for a long incision. So we've reduced the first and second metatarsals so they're parallel with each other, and those sesamoid bones are back underneath that joint in what we call an anatomic position. So when this patient walks, she's equally distributing pressure on both of those sesamoid bones. So another really neat part of this procedure is this cutting guide. So we're locking this in place. And what this does, it takes the fiddle factor out of the, the surgery where you fuse this joint. Now there's been a surgery called lap lapidus that's been around for a long time. The problem is it was all done by freehand and just by guesswork, basically. This standardizes that cut so it's the same every time and we get our perfect results that we're looking for. So we've finished our cuts and the next step is to remove the cartilage from the joint. And our goal is to take out these pieces in one piece. We're pretty close to being successful there, we'll get it all out. 
and now we have two raw surfaces of bone. You can see those pieces of bone right there. Once we have raw bone, we can fuse those two spaces together just like a fracture would heal after an injury. So the next step in this procedure is we're what's called fenestrating or drilling holes in the joint. What this does is it creates the ability to the body to fuse across that site. So we're actually putting multiple, multiple holes in here to allow for the bone cells to cross that gap and fuse those two bones. We're going to oppose the two surfaces together so those two bones can fuse together and become one and maintain that correction. So this compression clamp will come together and bring the two edges uh, in opposition to each other and allow for healing after this procedure. So as you can see here, we've placed two small pins to hold our reduction or remove our compression clamp, and that's gonna maintain our correction while we do the actual plating of the surgical site. So another great advantage to this uh, minimal incision system is this, this power plantar plate. The reason why this is better is it allows us to get two screws lower on the metatarsal, so closer to the weight bearing surface, and also shorter, so we're able to use that smaller incision. So let's be placed on the side of that first tarsal metatarsal joint, and we're putting that in place now. All right, so we've completed our reduction portion of this procedure. We've applied a dorsal plate on top to create stability there, and our medial power plantar plate on the side there. You can barely see that because of the mini incision, but that's the whole idea. We're trying to minimize the incision. So what that's done is it's reduced our angle. So we look at our x-ray here. You can see the angle between those two metatarsals has been reduced to parallel. The sesamoid bones are back underneath. The last portion of this procedure will be just to take off this small bump that this patient has on the side of their foot and potentially do a small procedure in the toe because she has some chronic deviation of that toe. Sometimes that affects the alignment after the surgery. So we're going to do everything we do to make that toe perfectly straight upon completion. So we've completed the minimal incision lapoplasty procedure and you can see our incision here. This is all closed cosmetically so afterwards when that incision clearly heals, the patient will have a very thin scar. We've also done a few additional procedures due to the severity of this patient's bunny deformity, which we'll see on the x-ray in a moment, and also for a pair of a tailor's bunny, which is much like a, a bunny on this side, but there's a deviation of the foot. But this patient will uh, be put in dressing, which will leave on about three days, and we'll change in the office. In about two weeks, we'll take the stitches out, which is simple snips, kind of painless removal of those sutures. During that whole process, she'll be allowed to put some weight bearing on her foot. And as the weeks go by, by about week three or four, we'll be walking in a boot without any assistance. By week six, she'll go back to an athletic shoe for six weeks, and by three months, she'll be back to full normal activity. And that is the minimal incision lapoplasty bunion procedure.